Just because we have seen some upsets in boxing recently, including Andy Ruiz stopping Anthony Joshua, don't expect Golovkin rolls to follow that trend. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. Gather round, gather round. Now, you know, I knew this was coming up. Triple G's fighting Steve Rolls. Not too many people you know, really even know who he is. And, you know, people are now trying to pitch this fight you see this ad it says Golovkin rolls a fight you can't miss a fight you can't miss Takate and I knew people were gonna try to spin this because you know this is a disowned fight and it's taken on um being taken on tomorrow look what disowned put a couple hours ago disowned we've seen these odds before so they're basically insinuating or suggesting like look Andrew Ruiz was an underdog he was 11 to 1 underdog to win and then it has similar odds for Steve Rolls to beat Golovkin 12 to 1 and then um for a KO win Ruiz versus Joshua was a 25 to 1 you know underdog to knock out Joshua and Steve Rolls is a 28 to 1 underdog to knock out Gennady Golovkin in his return listen I get it. You know, it's marketing. People are still talking about the fight with Andy Ruiz and Joshua still. So they're trying to create this mystique and, you know, this enigma, like what if? And I don't see it. You know, I've, I've done as much research as I could, you know, in the amount of time that I was willing to give Golovkin. Like you got to break down boxing. The thing with recent upsets, they weren't really upsets. They get labeled as upsets for certain reasons. But if you actually watch boxing, most of the time it's because the way a fighter is pitched or the way the fan is looking at the fight, they don't really know all the details. So they don't think, you know, for example, Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz has an amateur background. The guy Dillian White's about to fight Oscar Rivas, he fought him in the amateurs. So Andy Ruiz... I don't know the exact his record, but it was like a hundred and something, five or nine losses. So extensive amateur background. He's been around the game. He was with top rank, had a contract with them. He already challenged for a title loss with Joseph Parker. I really thought he won that fight, right? He has um, a look to him and people underestimate him. You know, former chunky kid and, you know, he still has some weight, some size. Doesn't look like this Greek statue. But he has fast hands. So that's totally different. Totally different to Joshua than Gennady Golovkin and Steve Rose. Same thing with Julian J. Rock Williams. Everyone based what Heard looked like recently versus Edislandi Lada. He knocked him down in the 12th. That was a great fight, by the way. I went to that fight. But they're looking at these things and momentum and stuff like that. But as a result, they were criminally underrating Julian J. Rock Williams. Me, I told you, I've watched J-Rock spar live, and he has skills, and I've always told you that, obviously, sparring is sparring. What happens in the gym stays in the gym, so, you know, I'm not going to tell you who he's sparring and all that extra shit, but he looked nice in there. He looked sweet. You could tell he was seasoned. This was, and I watched him spar after the Charlo loss. He still had it, so um, these fights are totally different, you know, because these guys are experienced guys like Andy Ruiz and J-Rock who were for whatever reason pushed to the back of the bus and relegated as like you know almost as if they were like journeymen and stylistically they were always to give that one style that they beat in upset problems j-rock's inside fight game is nasty the experience and the hunger getting back in the gym from losing to charlo you know i'm sure that's a burning desire he he told you after the charlo fight he literally said j-rock said at the press conference he said, yeah, man, this, this hurts. I want to be champion. I, I was I was expecting it, you know, but congrats to Charlo. I, I'm, I'm going to be a champion someday, just not tonight. He said something to that effect, like, I will still be a champion. It just won't happen tonight. So J-Rock already embedded it and ingrained in his mind that this wasn't over for him. Philly fighters are tough like that. Same thing with Tevin Farmer. Early career losses. He back on track. He's a champion now. 
you know, Danny Garcia got back to back losses in two years with Keith Thurman. Sean Porter, he looked really good versus Granados. Can't count a Philly fighter out. This Golovkin shit with Steve Rose, this is totally different. Like I said, you got to know boxing. People were shitting on J-Rock over some Charlo shit, but he was still a talented fighter. Because even the J-Rock, J-Rock and um, Charlo didn't really look like they liked each other when they were about to fight. But after that point, you know, it seemed like the Charlo was kind of cool with them. You know, even after J-Rock beat Jared Hurd, I believe I seen Jamal congratulate him or Jamel, one of them. So I think it was just, you know, in competitive spirit. But I don't think they genuinely hate. Like it, that was, it was like a mutual sign of respect. They know J Rock is a good fighter in general, even though Charlo won. That kind of thing. So this whole Steve Rose business is different. Same thing with Andy Ruiz. He's actually a dog and fast hands, and you know those guys are getting underrated. Who Golovkin's fighting? This is different. This is a guy who has never fought in a twelve rounder in his life, and he's thirty five years old. This is a guy who has a record of nineteen and zero with ten knockouts, right? 53% knockout. He has only had one 10 rounder in his career at age 35. He's been in one 10 rounder against Keandre Leatherwood, whoever the hell that is, with a record of 21, 5, and 1, 12, 15. So, December of last year was his very first 10 round fight. Look at the guy's resumes that he fought. You know, he, he hasn't really fought people. Beyond that, it's just different because Steve Rose, aside from experience, He's going up against a really experienced guy who just had Canelo fights, who's a silver medalist, who has, you know, 300 plus amateur fights. This is a mismatch. This this is different. Andy Ruiz and J-Rock going against, those aren't really upsets. They were made to look like upsets because y'all don't know what the fuck y'all talking about when it comes to this boxing shit. This is actually a, a mismatch. This is a guy who's never fought outside of Canada and he's never fought in a 12 rounder. You know, I, I tried to research. I didn't see no extensive history and, you know, crazy names he beat. And, uh, you know, I don't know anything about his amateur career. This is a guy out of nowhere, you know. So I see that DAZN's trying to, like, compare the odds and stuff like that. Like, oh, anything can happen. But no, this is not. The other thing, you have to look at the details. This man is a super middleweight, you know. And he's fighting at a catch weight of, like, 164 or three or whatever it was and he weighed in at 163 so a guy who's actually coming down in weight he's actually coming down in weight so that's different this is a guy who's you know really shouldn't be in there with Golovkin but we'll see how it plays out we'll see if I'm wrong we'll see if you know this upset streak continues but I think Golovkin he has a new training situation he knows where he's at. He's far more experienced. He's a hard puncher. He has a chin. His opponent doesn't look like he has, you know, any legendary experience or, you know, some Julian J. Rock. Not Julian J. Rock. Julian the Hawk Jackson type of dynamite power. So I'm looking for a stoppage in here by Golovkin. They're trying to build it and try to ride off this wave of recent upsets. Ivan Redcash stopping Devin Alexander and... Andy Ruiz and J-Rock and these UFC ones, but I don't see this fight. That's why I don't think anyone's really talking about this. This is a fight to make Golovkin look good. And he has a new trainer, you know, test things out and preserve him really for the Canelo versus Triple G3 fight. That's what I do believe. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. We working. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.